Inside the Mammoth Vehicle Assembly Building, designed and built to hold four giant Saturn V moon ships, another kind of ship is taking shape, the Ares 1X, which is the first experimental unmanned mission, which NASA hopes will ultimately lead it back to the moon. And when you look at the pieces, you realize how much it is based on the original Apollo concept, including the notion of an escape tower, a very important safety feature. Veteran shuttle flyer Jim Halsell, now vice president for exploration at ATK, gave me a tour. Crew escape system. That's a big deal. That's a significant difference when you start talking about this system. Uh, explain how it works. Well, how it works, basically, is it gives the crew a capability that we haven't had since the 1960s and early 1970s. And that is, in the space shuttle, we don't have a, a true abort system that's good from the pad up uh, for the first couple of minutes of flight. And as a result, the, the, the crew uh, now will have the ability, if something catastrophic were to happen to the rest of the vehicle, uh, to push a button or to have an automatic abort occur uh, that will take them away from the cat catastrophe underneath them and to safety under the parachutes. So this is one of the pieces of the puzzle that give us that order of magnitude improvement in crew safety that the Ares rocket and the Orion capsule are all about. Now, when you fly Ares 1, hopefully in August of this year, right, that's the current goal, you're going to be testing this, or th that's separate, right? We'll be testing it in the sense that if you look very closely, or if the camera can zoom in, you'll see a number of little blue spots and, and also black lettering. Those are test ports for temperature, for pressures, uh, both static pressures and uh, also stresses and strains and acceleration forces. In other words, this thing is instrumented to the hilt. So we want to take all the data to make sure that we've characterized the environment that this thing has to operate in during the first few minutes of flight correctly so that we know we have our design requirements correctly. So basically what you're testing here is aerodynamics, how it's going to flow through the air. You're not that's, testing whether it's going true. to pull the capsule. We, the, the rockets up there will be inert. We're not going to fire them. There are upcoming tests in other areas, other places, and with other systems where we will test these rockets. And in fact, some of them have already undergone the first series of tests, and they've passed that series of tests. And this, that's a representation of what the windows will be, obviously, on this test article. Right. This is the outer mold line. Up underneath this in the real vehicle would be the actual Orion crew module. And this is the slip cover, if you will, that goes over the top of it, including the two portholes for two of the windows on the, uh, that match up with the underlying Orion windows. Uh, but the launch aboard system is really, it's, if you're a crew member, you want to walk up and you want to hug it because this is what we haven't had for a generation, and we're going to have it for our future crews. It's, it's really hard to overstate how much that increases safety. It, it, it is. It, you can overstate it, and you can go back to the uh, Challenger disaster, and you can hypothesize that if we had had this capability, then the crew might be still with us today. Wow. So um, when we say Apollo on steroids, that this is actually a very similar sort of design that, that we saw in the Saturn V and the Saturn 1B, right? It is. The, uh, the Orion capsule, which underlies the uh, abort system here, has uh, the same basic design features. It's, the angles of the sidewalls are exactly the same. Uh, the underlying thermal uh, shield for entry is uh, going to work essentially the same way. There are lots of improvements, and, it, and its dimensions are larger than the old Apollo capsule, so that we can seat up to six crew members, as opposed to the three that we had on, uh, on Apollo. But we've taken a lot of, you know, if you look at all of our Aries and Constellation, what we're trying to do in general, use that which we already have on the shelf, which is well tested, which is human rated, which has proven its reliability and its safety, and then improve upon that, but use it as the building blocks to build the next rocket. And this is just a one perfect example of that. Of course, another point that differentiates this from the shuttle is there was no unmanned test flight. You know, Young and Crippen strapped in to that baby and flew the first flight, one of the gutsier moves ever. Well, yeah, as a, as a test pilot, I would tell you that that stands out as the test pilot of the, the test flight of the ages. Uh, and, and especially as we have operated the shuttle longer and become more aware of the complexity and some of the fragility of the vehicle, now to put myself in Crip or Young's place and, 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 and uh, to have the courage that they did to sit in that vehicle and go fly it the very first time, um, I really appreciate it. That, that was a heroic act on their part. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. The more we know about it, the more we know how risky it was. What are we seeing over here, uh, Jim? What's, the, what's the, this uh, over here? 
Okay. Let's take a look, take a walk over here. In general, if, if you'll if you'll imagine as okay. we walk in this direction that we're gonna take this piece and stack it on top of this piece, and then we'll take the two pieces combine and stack them on part of the next one down the line. So that's what we're going to be doing and as we walk around. You do around. your best to keep them in the right order, right? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, really that's the integration part that <laughs> always catches you. Yeah. So if this is the Orion capsule, then we need to put it on top of the service module, which includes some of the utilities, very similar to the service module that we had on the old Apollo vehicle. So this fairing represents what would be a service module. Yes, yeah. right? and it's going to have uh, the reaction control system just to be able to control your attitude. Uh, inside, not visible to us here, uh, and not here on this ro test rocket, but on the actual rocket, will be the service module propulsion system, which will allow you to change orbits, do the major uh, uh, orbital maneuvers for your rendezvous. So obviously you need to kind of dummy up the weight on this one, so to speak. How are you, how are you making it, uh, f fooling it into believing it's got actual uh, space hardware in here? Well, when we get a little bit farther down here, you'll see a stack of disks. Right, look at that. Okay. Look at that. And those are weights. Okay. So uh, it's, it, this is like just the exact opposite of what most people in the rocket science business do uh, all the time, trying to get weight out. You actually are putting weight in. In order to get the weight to be representative of what the real vehicle with all the engines and all the consumables right. and systems will be. Yeah. Here's an example of some of the weight. So the secret that Bob S. and his folks, Bob S. is the, uh, the project manager for the, for the Ares 1X system, uh, what they want to be able to do, it, it, they're okay with not having all the systems on board this rocket as long as they're able to duplicate not only the mass but the structural rigidity of the system as it will actually be. If they can do that, then the data that they're getting from all their pressure ports, all their temperature ports, all their accelerations and vibration monitors, all that will be representative of what we hope to expect uh, to see on the real vehicle. And the reason all that's important is because our ability to build the real vehicle to the right set of requirements is going to be, by and large, dictated by our mathematical models. This will allow us, the results from this flight will give us the data to go match up with our mathematical models and see how close we are in, in, in guessing or in predicting what's happening. If our guesses are close, we're happy. If they're not, then we go tweak the models to line them up with what we actually saw. So that we're building our ability to predict the flight environments. So um, as fancy and as sophisticated as computers are, you still need to inform the models with some real flight? Absolutely. You can argue that nowadays we can get away with fewer test flights, but I will not stand for anybody saying that we can get away without any test flights. The models are wonderful. Our predictive uh, computer capability now is, is tremendous compared to what it was back in the old days, but you still need to have real flight data, real flights to match that up and make sure your math models are correct. And that's what Ares 1X is going to provide the first actual test flight, first information to, to do that balancing with. This portion will be what? This solid? Is the, These would be this solids, this right? Is the, the core of the upper stage. Okay. The upper stage is a liquid hydrogen, right. uh, liquid oxygen system. Uh, the engine at the bottom of this is the J2X. The uh -huh. X is an upgraded version of the old J2 that sure. was used on the Saturn V upper stages. And that's uh, a liquid? Hydrogen, liquid oxygen, like the shuttle main engine like kind of shuttle. thing, right? And once again, it's another example. The J2 is another example of where we're using te technology that was first developed in the Saturn era, and we're upgrading it in its performance and in its reliability for use here. Everybody at NASA belongs to a generation, our generation, that hasn't had the opportunity to do this, to build a rocket. So we're going back and we're talking to the Saturn guys and the guys who designed and tested the shuttle, and we're trying to get their understanding, their feel for uh, how much testing do you need, when do you need it, and the balance is always you want to do testing early, so if you've got a problem, you can react to it without impacting your downstream schedule and your budget. But on the other hand, you want to do your testing late enough so that you're using actual, actual flight-like uh, hardware. So there's a balance there we're trying to meet. It's got to be kind of exciting to finally see hardware here. Oh, the, this is going to be, I mean, I can just imagine the news that it's going to make the day that this thing launches here later on in the summer. It'll, uh, it'll show people the reality, which is we're just not talking rockets. We're just not building rockets on PowerPoint charts anymore. We are building hardware, and we're getting data, and we're actually going to start fabricating the flight, the actual Ares flight hardware.